considering that I put that we at Junk Rims put nearly a week's worth of work and effort to make a decent movie review. I am not going to be dissuaded from some stupid copyright claim from posting a review of Pet Cemetery. Now, if I even have to just put up a picture of some pumpkins and the sound of my voice, then I will do that. The review must go on. Now, the studio that made Pet Cemetery, I encourage people to not do business with that studio anymore. If you already have the movie, you've probably already seen it, but this is my review. Pet Cemetery was a novel written by Stephen King in 1983, and it was adapted into a movie in 1989, directed by Mary Lambert. The word cemetery, S-E-M-A-T-A-R-Y, as it is spelled in the movie, was a deliberate misspelling. We'll get to the reason why on that later. The film stars Dale Midkiff as Lewis Creed, Denise Crosby as Rachel Creed, Blaze and Bo Berdahl as Ellie Creed, Miko Hughes as Gage Creed, and the late Fred Gwynn as Judd Crandall. Brad Greenquist is cast as Victor Pascal, and Stephen King makes a cameo as a preacher. The movie's score was written by Elliot Goldenthal and features two songs written by the Ramones. The opening is very creepy. The way that it shows a cemetery, a pet cemetery, in a circular formation with the grave markers for the pets being made of any material that could be thrown together. Fencing, bedpost, you name it. It has children singing in the background and a type of music that leaves it leaves you very unnerved. It feels cult-like. At one point, there's a children's rocking toy at one of their pet's graves. And just thinking of the innocence lost it's enough to send chills down your spine. Everything about the opening just sets the tone for the entire film. A film that is horrific. It is made to scare. We are introduced to a family, the Creed family, typical, uh, typical middle class American family. They are normal. And that is the best word that I have to describe them. It's just normal. He is a normal man. She is a normal woman. They have two normal children. They have a normal cat with a normal name. They live in a normal two-story house. They are the normal American dream. And if it was a normal movie, then they would have a normal adventure. But this is the work of Stephen King, the titan of terror and the prince of panic. You know that if you're caught being normal in one of his works, you might as well get caught with your pants down trying to dodge rush hour traffic. To be normal in one of King's works is to ask the higher powers of his megaverse to rain havoc and destruction down on you. And they tend to live in the chaos capital of the world, Maine. I say that because a lot of King's works take place in Maine. Right off the bat, they show that they are horrible parents. They leave their toddler son unattended by a car that's right next to a highway with trucks that speed up and down it to attend to their little girl who fell like two feet from a swing. These are horrible parents, and it's a plot device that comes into play later in the movie. And it is Judd that comes to the rescue. 
kindly old man who turns to a creepy old man because he has a dark secret. And at one point, there is a kid that gets into a car accident and half of his brain is left exposed, which is creepy as all get out. And he, as he dies, he, his ghost starts to manifest to the Creed family to warn them. His name is Victor Pascal, and so I call him because he warns people, Pascal the Friendly Ghost. In one scene, he appears, he manifests as himself over the bed, over Lewis's bed talking to him. And if I saw a dead guy with half his brain sticking out, leaning over my bed talking to me, I'd probably soil myself. The path that leads to the pet cemetery is straight and narrow. It seems to be very opposite of the Bible. In the Bible, it says the straight and narrow path leads to life. Well, in this movie, it leads to death and destruction. And the ironic twist is that Stephen King, the author of the novel that has this, plays as a preacher. What's even more ironic is that Judd Crandall's character, uh, Judd Crandall, is played by the same person who played Herman Munster. So, Fred Gwynn plays as Herman Munster in the Munsters. A character of a cre the character is a creature who's brought back from the dead. A play on Frankenstein's monster. And in this, he plays a character that leads someone else to bury their dead cat and their dead son and his dead wife. In a cemetery where they come back to life. But anything that is buried in the cemetery comes back evil. The cemetery that you see in the opening... It's not the cemetery that is the actual evil cemetery. The evil cemetery is that of ancient Indian burial grounds of the Micmac Indians. And about 30 minutes in, there is a key scene where Pascal warns Lewis to not go beyond what he should. He says, don't go on, Doc, no matter how much you may feel you have to. Do not go on to the place where the dead walk. The barrier was not meant to be crossed. The ground beyond is sour. Very cryptic, very creepy. And that's what this movie is all about. It's being cryptic and creepy. Considering that anything that you bury in the cemetery comes back, and he buried his cat, who was a good cat, and comes back crazed, violent, and stares at him while he's taking a bath. Speaking of which, I had a cat like that that was very much alive. He was crazed, violent, and he would stare at my dad in the shower. The only difference between him and church was that my cat tried to hunt my mom's arm in the night. I just wonder if you took a bad if because you take a good animal they come back bad if you take a bad animal do they come back worse or do they come back good <laughs> maybe I'm just thinking too much the scenes that deal between the scenes dealing with Rachel and her sister Zelda and no we're not talking about Legend of Zelda Zelda we're, it's a different one is the stuff that nightmares are made of. For a little kid, they see Zelda and she looks like a zombie and it scares them half to death. For adults, we realize the real monster is Zelda's sister, Rachel. It's horrible how she treats her sister. The character of Rachel is a selfish, egotistical, self-indulgent, hoggish, narcissistic, self-centered floozy. Not only does she lack the situational awareness that's required of a parent and paying attention to their kids, she does not have the love that a sister should have for her own sibling. 
who is suffering from a debilitating illness. Of course, there, the parents having the, the situational awareness of a domesticated, retarded turkey leads to their son Gage being killed in one of the most gruesome manners possible and one that is every parent's worst nightmare. The child wandering into the road and getting hit by a truck. Of course, we could see this coming from the very first part of the movie, but the way it's handled it just intensifies the scene rather than taking away from it. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, he buries his son in the cemetery and his son comes back evil. And when that happens, all chaos breaks loose. I would tell you what happens, but I don't want to spoil the ending for you if you haven't seen it. Pet Cemetery is a frighteningly good horror movie. It's one that I haven't watched in ages. And I decided to bust it out and watch it to commemorate this first Halloween Horror Scarathon review. Considering that my first review of it was taken down by some stupid copyright claim, I may not go back and ever watch it again. I may put it back on the shelf and let it collect dust. Because the real monster in the first review was not the cemetery, it was the selfishness of the characters. The characters were self-centered and it reflects the typical middle-class American family. But I found another monster and the, that other monster is the studio that put it out because they're just as self-centered. They can't even take someone independently giving them a good review. If you're so paranoid about someone stealing your work that you can't let someone even give you a good review, <clears throat> that is truly self-centered. That is true greed. And that's where the real monster comes in. As far as the movie is concerned, the acting is very, very good. The director had... I got to give props to Mary Lambert. <clears throat> she did a great job in directing the film. Stephen King provided the source material, one of the scariest books that's ever graced American bookshelves. As far as graphics are concerned, it, the movie was made in 1989, so don't expect anything too flashy. The movie is not particularly gory, but the subject matter is extremely graphic. The movie serves as an excellent warning to not be so attached to things, to be able to let into people, and to let go, and to not try to proceed further than we should. As Pascal the Friendly Ghost said, don't go on. No matter how much you feel you have to, the ground beyond is sour. You would think that everyone involved in the movie would have learned that. And you would think that we would learn that as a society. To not go beyond try to reach further than we should for the ground beyond is sour. That's a quick review of the movie and how that I feel. Great movie. Great acting. Good graphics for the time. Great story. Great author. Horrible studio. And that is my review.